Good morning, friends. Thanks for joining me for an Unfolding the Word time together. Today is one of those red-letter days where we finish a study. So, Lord willing, that's what we're going to do today as we conclude our look at 1 Kings chapter 19 and the issue of depression and discouragement in life and how God works with us in the midst of it, how to get back out of it. Today, I'm going to pick up our reading at the end of the 19th chapter, beginning in verse 19. So he departed from there, and he found Elijah, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen in front of him. And he was with the twelfth. And Elijah passed by him and cast his cloak on him. And he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, Let me kiss my father and my mother, and then I'll follow you. And he said to him, Well, go back again, for what have I done to you? And he returned from following him, took up the yoke of oxen, sacrificed them, boiled their flesh with the yokes of the oxen, and then gave it to the people, and they ate. And then he arose, and he went after Elijah and assisted him. The last several days, we've been looking at the final piece of our study of depression and discouragement, and that is how to climb back out of the pits, what God wants us to do to help get us back into the normal processes of life. We saw that the process began as we re-examined the, the facts of our situation. God had posed the question a second time to Elijah, why are you here? And the facts hadn't changed much. The details about the discouraging parts of his life were, had remained the same, but what had changed was how he got, Elijah was able to view God. He saw God now properly, and everything was changed. As he gained a more biblical understanding of God, it allowed him to see the same set of circumstances differently. He concluded different things from the set of circumstances. Secondly, and related to that, we saw that he had come to the point where he was understanding God was still in control. The fact that things hadn't worked out as he expected Elijah had an expectation of what was going to happen in Israel following the Mount Carmel episode. The fact that it hadn't turned out that way didn't mean God wasn't in control. His view of God was too small. God had ways of working that Elijah had overlooked. God isn't always going to work by raining fire from heaven, as happened on Mount Carmel itself. Seeing that changed everything. The loss of his particular expectation and scenario didn't mean God had lost control. Important for us. Then we also saw that the command to Elijah was get back into ministry again. Go back and serve the Lord. Acts chapter 20, our life only has significance and meaning when we are serving and fulfilling the purpose of God. If we're not doing that, we're going to just be further discouraged. You never get out of discouragement without getting back into ministry and the fulfillment of God's call on your life. Yesterday, we saw yet a fourth thing, and that was that we have to understand, despite our woe is me feelings when we have difficult life circumstances, we have to understand other brothers and sisters are facing similar hard times and are trusting God in the midst of it, that we're not alone. We're not forgotten. We're not unique. Important principles. Now today, in these concluding verses, we discover the final principle, and it is this. God said to Elijah, you've been a loner to this point. That's what I've called you to do. But from here on in, I don't want you to be a loner. You need fellowship. You need to find and prioritize fellowship. It was easy for Elijah to conclude he was the only one who hadn't bowed the knee, the only one who was suffering, because he was basically all by himself. He'd been doing, he'd been carrying out a very isolated ministry from other people. And isolation breeds distortion. He had, if we choose solitude, it will seldom give us perspective, and we will be more apt to draw wrong conclusions. God wanted Elijah to change from that solitary, isolated kind of ministry orientation and start to interact once again. And the way that he accomplished that is he said, I want you to have a partner. I want you to have Elisha. And I want you to bring Elisha into the fold. And now you will not be alone. 
And the two of you together will help each other and the others that will come around you as well to stay in balance and to stay in perspective. And so go on and get Elijah or Elisha. And so Elijah did that. And he went out and he found Elisha. And the description of these vital verses is the events surrounding that and how Elisha made a very definitive determination to drop what he had been doing and move forward in ministry, uh, joining with Elijah. We all need fellowship. The scripture is so plain about that importance. It isn't an option for the believer, whether you're in fellowship or not in fellowship, whether you prioritize it or don't prioritize it. God commands you to be in fellowship. He commands you to not forsake the assembling of yourselves with others. He commands you to exhort one another every day as long as it is, as it is called today. Uh, Hebrews chapter 3, verses 12 to 13. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 23 to 25. These are not alone, but they conclusively show us that God's plan is not some individual privatization faith. He wants you in fellowship. He saves you individually, but he saves you into a family. And he wants you functioning within that family. Part of the protection against discouragement is when we are in family. It's when we are isolated from family, either because of choice on our part or circumstances. Depression is much more likely. Discouragement is much more likely. When we're encountering tough times, and make no mistake, we all will encounter tough times <laughs> sometimes. Uh, those are the times that we need the prayer and encouragement of brothers and sisters in Christ. All of us are going to face hard times. We're going to go through them. Sometimes we're in them for a long period of time. We need the brothers and sisters. But here's the irony. Here's how we click as human beings. You and I, when we're in a hard time, tend to avoid fellowship. We tend to come up with reasons why we can't be around brothers and sisters in Christ. <laughs> to be discouraged, to be depressed, breeds isolation. Satan knows that, and he will do whatever he can do to tempt us to act on the inclination to isolation instead of obedience to the command to not forsaking the assembling of ourselves with others. Understand your, quote, inner feeling is going to be to retreat. And God says, no, that's not the real you. <laughs> that's part of the old programming in your life. I've placed a different spirit within you, and you need to align with that. And if I've commanded you to be in fellowship, I don't care whether you're tired. I don't care whether you're discouraged. I don't care whether you're disillusioned with yourself. Get in fellowship. Nobody else can get in fellowship on your behalf. You're the one that has to get in fellowship. Get in fellowship. It is a critical, critical piece of solving discouragement and solving depression. And if the body of believers that you're around does not carry out that function in your life, leave it and get in a better one. You need to be in a place where the people take koinonia seriously and believe they're in it together and want to be supportive of one another. Obey God, whatever your feelings are, and connect to the brothers and sisters. Even if in so doing, all you're saying to someone is not an elaboration of all you're discouraged, just simply to say, I'm facing some discouraging times. Pray for me and encourage me in it, and, and I'll pray for you. And Somehow in the framework of that, we're helped. God understanding that, make sure that from this point on in Elijah's ministry, he was never alone. Elisha, among others, were now a part of it. So how's it all come together? comes together this way. God has purposes even in the midst of the difficult circumstances, those circumstances that lead sometimes in my life and in your life into times of discouragement and depression. 
God gives us strength in the midst of such times. Even when we start to handle them wrong, he reaches out to us. But we also need to continue to be who he's called us to be to get back out of them. God's answer to those discouraging times is not to remove those discouraging times, but to change your response to them. I hope these various aspects of how to climb back out of the pits, how to understand how God meets us in the midst of it, how we set ourselves up for struggle and failure, help all of that has been useful to you. Go back and review at times 1 Kings 19. Whenever you are feeling down, discouraged, retreating, let God bring these things back to your heart that you can begin to say, I'm out of the pits. <laughs> I refuse to run and lay down and want to die. God bless you as that happens.